How big is the solar system? If you're like me, you probably grew up looking at illustrations of the solar system that looked something like this. You're gonna find variations of this if you look for diagrams online or in another book. You get a really good look at each of the planets. You can see the sun, the earth, the gas giants, the inner planets. But what you can't really see is how far apart the planets are or how they vary in size. It's not the illustrator's fault or some government conspiracy. It's just that the solar system is so big and the size are so varied it's kind of impossible to represent it in a diagram on a page or in a screen or even in an entire book. If you ask Siri or Google how big the solar system is, you're going to get an answer that looks something like this. 7,440,000,000 miles in diameter. That's a big number, but to be honest, it's kind of hard to understand how big that number is. It's kind of beyond human comprehension. So if we can't use a diagram to accurately show the size of the solar system, and we can't use a pure number, is there any way that we can really see the solar system in all of its bigness? Absolutely. I'm here at Carson Newman University, and today we're gonna to turn this American football field into the solar system. Now, to do that, our sun is gonna be represented by this soccer ball. So, in real life, the sun is 864,337 miles in diameter. So, what that means is that for every millimeter on this soccer ball, that represents 4,000 miles. Just for context, 4,000 miles is the distance between New York City and Russia. That's crazy enormous. We're gonna put the sun right here in the center on the goal line. Okay, so first planet up, Mercury. Now, Mercury is pretty tiny. If the sun is a soccer ball, Mercury is the size of a grain of salt. Although it's the closest planet to the sun, if the sun is a soccer ball, Mercury sits right here on the 10 yard line. And look at that, right away we can see there is so much distance between the sun and Mercury. It's mostly empty space and we're just getting started. So second planet up, Venus. If the sun is a soccer ball, Venus is the size of a pushpin. Now just like Mercury, although it's pretty close to the sun, it sits right here at the 19 yard line. It's a lot of space. So now we've come to our favorite planet, Earth. So if the sun is a soccer ball, Earth is just a blue pushpin. Look at the size difference. So just think, every place you've ever visited, even if it's in another country or on another continent, it's on this little tiny dot. And compared to the Earth, the sun is enormous. So just how far away does the Earth sit from the sun? Let's find out. 26 yards away. If the sun's a soccer ball, Earth is a blue pushpin 26 yards away. That's crazy. At this scale, the moon is a piece of salt orbiting the Earth a little over two inches away. Fun fact, you could fit all of the planets in the solar system in between the moon and the Earth, including the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. All right, fourth planet, Mars. Mars is actually the planet we visited the most, although we've not sent a human there yet, only robots. And to be honest, half of those missions have failed. And maybe this can show you why. See, if the sun is a soccer ball, then Mars is just a sesame seed sitting right here on the 40 yard line. Imagine launching something from that blue pushpin over there and successfully landing on this sesame seed. It's really difficult. And one day humans will make that journey, but that's gonna take six months just of traveling through space. So you better bring a good book. Okay, so our solar system so far all fits on the football field. And these are called the inner planets, or sometimes the rocky planets, but now it's time to go to the gas giants. So this is where we find Jupiter, outside of the football stadium, and 134 yards away from our soccer ball sun. Compared to the sun, Jupiter is a quarter. But don't let this scale fool you, because you could fit 1,300 Earths inside of Jupiter. It's enormous. In fact, it could fit all of the other planets inside of it times two. So now we get to the sixth planet, Saturn. You may know Saturn for its rings. To get here, we've had to go down the street, cross the field, and get to the entrance of the softball field. Compared to our soccer ball sun, Saturn is the size of a nickel, and it sits here 247 yards away. Okay, now we've come to planet seven, Uranus. 
So we've had to cross several streets and cross the lawn just to get to the Humanities Building here, 497 yards away. And compared to our soccer ball sun, Uranus is just a lima bean. We've had to go past the Humanities Building, past the Library, past the Dormitory, and nearly to the Business Building to get 777 yards away from our soccer ball sun. And that's where we find the last known planet, Neptune. Now, compared to the soccer ball sun, Neptune is the size of a popcorn kernel. A very cold, lonely popcorn kernel. But there's one more celestial body that sits warmly in all of our hearts, and that's the dwarf planet, Pluto. So Pluto is actually smaller than the size of our own moon. If the sun is a soccer ball, Pluto is the size of a grain of sand. And in our model, it's 1,054 yards away from the sun. So you can't see the football stadium anymore. We're at a walking track now. In fact, if the sun were to suddenly go out, Pluto wouldn't notice a difference for six whole hours. That's how long it takes light to get from the sun to Pluto. It's pretty far away. So this is our solar system. It's massive and it might even be bigger. There might be more planets out there like the elusive planet nine. And not only did our model not fit inside of a football field, it didn't even fit inside of a university campus. And most of that is empty space, but all of it, even the massive gas giants were held in orbit by our sun. Now, this soccer ball obviously doesn't do the sun justice. It's huge, powerful, and crucial to life on Earth, but it's also a little scary. Next time, we're gonna talk all about the sun. So obviously, diagrams like this one are not to scale. It's really difficult to visualize the size of the solar system. And to explore the planets, even with probes whizzing thousands of miles per hour through the vacuum of space, takes a really long time. Here's an example of that. NASA's next mission to the planet Saturn is to visit one of its moons, Titan. The current plan is actually to send a drone there, yes, that kind of drone, called Dragonfly. And here's the thing, imagine you're a sophomore in high school in the year 2019. So you have time to graduate high school, go to college, graduate college, find a nice person, date them for a few years, then get married, wait a few more years, have a kid, and then send that kid off to kindergarten before Dragonfly arrives at Saturn. That's just how vast our solar system is, and it's just one tiny corner of the galaxy. There's a lot out there to explore, so there's a lot that we can learn. Our solar system is huge, and getting around it takes some time. So if you were gonna be trapped in a spaceship traveling to Mars for six months, what movies or books would you bring to help pass the time? Comment below.